Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and previously on this channel we did a video about roof space ventilation and moisture build up and so on and we had quite a lot of questions about that and the thing that really confused a lot of people is whether they needed to ventilate their roof space or not. And this vexes a great many roofers as well who think that by putting in a vapor open breather membrane as they're called that solves the problem and they don't then need to ventilate the roof space. And of course, even building inspectors are slightly confused by this whole subject. So what I'm gonna do in this video is to try and shine a light on it and bring a bit of clarity to the subject and hopefully we can work out what kind of ventilation, if any, you need in your roof space. We used to have ventilation into the eaves, which would come in on both sides of the roof through either a continuous strip or some holes in the soffit. And that ventilation would blow over the roof and hopefully find its way either out the other side or if you've got ridge vents, up into the ridge and away, which is a far better arrangement than trying to get it to go back and over. If you've got a wind direction here, you've got wind blowing on the roof there, wind is blowing through here, and on the other side of the roof, you've got a negative pressure zone, you've got suction, and therefore you find you've got a vacuum. When people talk about roofs being blown off, very often what's happening is this rather like an aircraft wing, the wind is whistling across the top here and it's creating this uplift on this side so that actually what's happening is the tiles are really getting sucked off the roof rather than just blown off it. And that's what we used to have and it worked very well indeed except for one thing and that was that having all this cold air blowing across the top of our insulation meant that it cooled the roof space down considerably. So although it cleared the airborne moisture, we had this cold air rushing across the top of the insulation and maybe you've got something like glass fiber in there or something else, but obviously as the air gets through and you've got this suction going, it means that that air is cooling that insulation down, which is not a great thing. The other thing that's happening is that because you have this air blowing over the top, this vigorous, air circulation, ventilation going through the roof space, you get air being drawn up from the house with this sort of vacuum effect that you've got here, if you like, the air's rushing over and it's drawing air up and that air's coming in through all the nooks and crannies around your windows, your floorboards and everything else. So you've got this air blowing over the top, but you've also got air being drawn up from the house, being sucked up into that roof space around things like the loft hatch, if a loft hatch isn't particularly well sealed and around light fittings, even worse if you've got down lighters in there, but anywhere, basically even around pipes and cables, anywhere that that air can get through it will carry through and with it it will take moisture and this is all about moisture so when we increase our insulation we decide that we want to put in some more insulation we're going for the modern standard say 200 millimeters of insulation up there what very often happened is that people blocked up these air inlets here and that meant that this roof space was no longer ventilated properly, but of course we still had all this moisture escaping from the house into that cold roof space. And because that cold roof space is now colder because we've put more insulation in there, we find that very soon we were getting moisture droplets forming on the underside of the roofing felt and dripping down on all the things that we get up in the loft. And even when it got really bad, say in the winter, when you've got the heat on, and of course, when you've got heat on, you've got warm air, which has got more pressure on it. And so the pressure differential is dragging that moisture up from the house and it's all going in there. The moisture, by the way, is what we're creating from cooking, from breathing, from drying our washing, from just basically living. You've got all that moisture going up there. It's condensing on there. It's dropping down. And in some severe cases, you find that you've even got damp patches appearing along the ceiling, especially at the edges and you get mold and the whole thing is just a nightmare. What they try to do is they try to balance this idea of having more insulation in the roof space 
and getting rid of the moisture without over ventilating the roof space. And the way that they did that was to put on a membrane, which is a vapor permeable membrane. Now, these are often called breather membranes, but breather membranes are actually for walls. The actual official breather membrane is for a wall, and these are what we call vapor permeable, vapor open, and they can also be air open. And if they're air open, it means that they will allow a certain amount of ventilation, a certain amount of air that's blown through to go through the loft and do a great job in ventilation. The problem is that not all membranes are equal. Some of them have a higher resistance to moisture than others. Now, the membrane is great because what it's supposed to do is stop windblown rain and snow and things like that from getting under the tiles and, and leaking down into your loft. So they do a great job in doing that, but they also need the moisture to escape through them. So if you get yourself a good breather membrane, and what I would say the measure of a good breather membrane to me is one that's made up of different layers, different plies, maybe three ply. And the idea of that is that you've got this wicking surface on the membrane so that when you're getting excess moisture coming up from the house, when it's cold day, when you've got a lot of heat coming up from the house, you've got a lot of moisture coming up, it's actually hitting the underside of that membrane and it's soaking in, it's being absorbed by that wicking layer in the membrane and it's holding it there. And then as the membrane dries out, more of it is drawn through. So basically that is the best kind of membrane you can get and it will cope with sometimes very high levels of moisture. The drawback is that it very often costs quite a lot more money. Rather than being able to pick up a membrane for say 40 quid, you might even be paying 120 pounds for a 50 meter roll of meter wide membrane to do the job. But it is an investment. The only trouble is that roofers who are on a price, they're trying to do your job cheaply, they're trying to make as much money as they can, which is understandable. They're looking at these materials and they're thinking, shall I pay 120 pounds for that membrane or shall I just put them in one for 50 quid? And they don't always know that that membrane won't work in that situation. One of the reasons they don't know is because roofers don't like going into your house. So the one thing they're not gonna do is they're not gonna examine your ceilings to see if you've got any kind of vapor barrier across that ceiling, which would be polythene sheet that's put on before the plasterboard goes on. In other words, you've got the ceiling joists here, you've got a layer of polythene there, and then you've got the plasterboard there, so that anything that migrates through that plasterboard hits the polythene and can't get through. Now that's a vapor barrier, and that's supposed to be fitted in new buildings. Sometimes it's done with a fall back plasterboard, but you're supposed to have that really tight, nice level of vapor protection running down the side and joining up with the walls but it's not always done. And the roofer who's on the scaffolding who never wants to go inside the house is not gonna go in there to examine whether you've got a polythene membrane in there or anything else, or whether you've got lots of leaks around the loft hatch and so on. And if he does see that situation, he may think, Do you know what? In this situation, we need a higher grade membrane. In other words, we need a wicking membrane, which is gonna cost 120 quid. So if all he's doing is saying, I'll buy you the cheapest membrane I can, I'll fit it, it's not always gonna work out for your particular house. Sometimes it can, sometimes a 40 quid membrane is exactly what you need but this is the problem that we're up against. We've got this situation where it falls between different trades. When they're building a house, the roofer isn't interested in what's going on with the plasterboard or the vapor barrier. And of course, those guys aren't really thinking, we don't know what the roofer is gonna fit in the way of membrane. So it's a question of having a little bit of the knowledge yourself and asking the right questions. Now, we're just gonna put up a few links to some membranes. You can see what they are. You can see what the price difference is and you can see which ones comply and we'll see which ones could give you a very high level of moisture permeability. So sometimes you can pick up a bargain membrane and if you're in any doubt, check with the manufacturer to check whether their membrane 
is suitable. Now, I was looking through the Screwfix website, for example, and I saw a membrane in there, and it clearly stated that it does not require additional loft ventilation. I thought, well, that's a very brave claim to make, given the fact that they don't know what situation you got. And I looked at this membrane, and it's a fairly cheap membrane, but actually, it was a three-ply membrane. So they were dead right, it should do the job. But what I'm really saying is, when you have that roof renewed, you really need to go up and check a variety of different weather conditions. Go up and have a look at it in the winter. Go and up and have a look at it and see that you're not getting any moisture forming on here. Because if you get moisture forming on the underside of here and it soaks into those rafters and it rots those rafters, you've suddenly got yourself a very big repair bill. So if you do see moisture building up in the roof space, if you do see droplets forming on the underside of that membrane and it turns out that they fitted the wrong membrane, the best thing you can do in those situations is to introduce more ventilation into the eaves and possibly a ventilated ridge, which is basically a ridge tile which has got a bit of air path through there so that this moisture can escape through there. And if that's not possible, some of those little ridge vents that you get, which are basically you replace the tile and put in ventilators, you've probably seen the sort of thing. Sometimes they're quite ugly sort of mushroom things. Sometimes they're nice and neat flat ventilators. But whatever you do, if you see moisture, it means you've got to increase the ventilation or you've got to fit some kind of vapor barrier here to stop that moisture getting up into the roof space. And the other thing that you really must do is extractor fans. Make sure you've got extractor fans in the bathroom, in the shower room, and also down here in the kitchen, an extractor cooker hood and things like that. So as you're creating that moisture, you're removing it at source before it has a chance to get around the rest of the house and do its worst. The situation is made worse by the fact that we have double glazing, we're draft proofing all around, we're sealing up our houses, and if that moisture can escape into the roof space, it's really one of the only ways that it can get out. I hope that's helped to clarify the situation. It's a little bit rambling, I guess, and uh, I could probably clarify it more but the thing to do is put your questions in the comments below and we'll try and answer those and don't forget we're going to bring back Ask Skill Builder very soon and so if you've got a particular question that you want to ask us if you've got a situation with your house send us in some nice video pictures that way not upright and if you're interested in this subject you think you might have problems with moisture in your roof space check out this video